Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are going to repeat some few things because of the reawakening of certain doctrines that are still permeating within the end time message era and many people especially in Africa are grabbing it because it's coming from overseas brothers and sisters God is not a white man and God is not a black man God is a spirit so whether it is black or green or yellow whatever comes from you if it is not dovetailed by scripture we cannot take it but it looks like the world is bowing especially Africans our own food we don't want to eat it we want to eat it I mean the white man's food and it is worrying us they try to pull us away the very oil that we had in those days that was able to help us coconut oil and the rest they were very healthy for our, fa- our forefathers and the rest they tried to take it away from us and now they are bringing it back to us again so we have to try as much as possible to look at God and his word and not the face of man so in Revelation chapter 1 we are reading from the 13th verse we see the almighty God invested all his power in his son Jesus Christ when John was lifted up he saw seven golden candlesticks and we know that it's typing seven church ages of which we Laodicea are the last one so we see the son of man Jesus Christ walking amidst the golden candlesticks from the first church age to where we are tonight so from verse 14 to 15 you know this already we see the description of not only ordinary person but the very supremacy of Jesus Christ as God has vested in him all the strength of the world and his face is shining like the sun and he God is a son of righteousness so we see that from verse 14 to 15 God is demonstrating his son as is the only person in the in the world that is walking among the seven golden candlesticks in this world so in verse 15 the last portion of it when he was walking among the seven golden candlesticks he was speaking so he was not just walking he was talking God in him was talking speaking to all the ages including where we are today so our master jesus christ is not dumb or quiet he's speaking to his church as he started from the first age till now that we are standing here he is still speaking he practicalized the voice the speaking by going to verse 16 by holding seven stars and talking to the stars to initiate his vision for the age that's the practical implementation of what god christ is doing for the voice of many waters could not be understood by mortal man for when this water is flowing this water is flowing this water is flowing and you are hearing so many waters it becomes confusion So he, the Lord, practicalizes in such a way that for mankind in every church age to hear my voice as clear as possible, I will select men and I will speak to the men and the men will speak to the church ages. So we see seven stars in his hands and out of his mouth, the many waters is coming the word to the men and they will speak it to the people he started with paul by giving paul the words that would lay the foundation for all the seven church ages so we realize now that when we jump to this last church age laodicea church age the voice 
that spoke to the star gave the type of message or the type of words that would be conducive for Laodicea men. For Laodicea men and women are coming out into the world as prosperous people, high-minded people, rich people materially, and they look at their statuses and things and think that because they are well-known and well-behaved and very rich, they are special people that they don't need God. In Africa, we are coming close. The next 10, 20 years, you see churches will dwindle like in overseas. For Laodicea church age has raised men of status, of technology, of healing, of so many things. So in certain portions in the world, they think God is useless. The churches are big, but nobody is staying there. The priests are falling apart. They don't have people to control. And I'm saying that it will come to Africa. Because of poverty, that is why we think we are riding to God. But when it is the condition of Laodicea, so God selected a man and spoke to him to remind the members of Laodicea church age to return to him God. Revelation chapter 3 verse 18. I always tell you, the pure gold is God's word. For gold itself can be impure. But God spoke to the Laodicea church age messenger to tell the people of Laodicea that he, God, is gold tried in fire. Refined gold. Pure. That is God's word. And out of that fine gold, God's word, will come out characteristics that will be above Laodicea. That the righteousness of God. Today, the righteousness of God is trampled under. Even churches in this world are ordaining gay, gay men and women and priests. They have thrown God away. God's went away. They don't care about it. When the Bible talks about forbidding about same sex and all this, the world is embracing it. So the pure gold is supposed to produce white raiment to let people come back to the righteousness of God. That is the only message that God spoke to the Laodicea church messenger which reflects the original of Apostle Paul. So the pure gold produces the white raiment and I'm saying before God, that is the only message that is supposed to qualify the candidate of Laodicea bride. No other message than the restoring of your life to scripture and building a righteous life. This is the requirement that will make you a candidate of heaven. Any other information is not necessary. So whosoever is ascribing himself as the Laodicea star will have no other message different from Apostle Paul. Amen. That the bride of Christ must have the fullness of Christ in them. The word of God and righteousness. Nothing else. Because the selection of the bride of Christ for all church ages was based on scripture, pure food. Christ Jesus warned the world in Matthew 13 verse 33 about the possibility of contamination of food. That's why he warned us. The woman hid three measures of meal but it was not supposed to be, uh, I mean, uh, 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 bad food. It's supposed to be pure wheat, excellent food. God, this is the only requirement for all the bride in church ages. So he, the Lord Almighty, knowing tomorrow and knowing what the world, including Laodicea people will do, warn people 
that be careful there is a woman who is contaminating the food which is by pure word which you are supposed to lead and believe to bring forth righteousness so make sure from that time onwards the food that you are eating which is the requirement for my selection will not be contaminated amen that's why Luke 13 33 is there so all men who will make heaven are men who are supposed to eat the right food just as God told Apostle Paul the measures God is giving to every church age including Laodicea church age is the same for all of them because they were all supposed to restore the mind of the people to the pure word the pure food so when you go back to Matthew 13 verse 30 and then you see this gathering of the wheat into the barn I told you last Thursday that the criteria for gathering into the barn is the pure food and when you look at the way Christ Jesus selected the seven stars it means that the selection of the people within every church age will not go beyond another church age the selection will be within the church age so when i talk about laodicea church age there is not going to be another age where the bride of christ will be selected we are all selected within the seventh church age so the wheat which is being gathered into the barn will be gathered into the barn within the seventh church age there is no eighth church age there is no eighth messenger there is no eighth bride leader it's all false the only one thing you have to know restore yourself to the true word and make sure you remain within the seventh church age for there are seven golden candlesticks that Jesus Christ is walking through, not eight. Amen. So we realize now that so long as the man closing is within the seventh church age, Laodicea church age, then man must not relent or man must not rely on the doctrines that we are searching for somebody else to come who will fulfill the eighth church age it's going to be a most dangerous one because revelation chapter 10 verse 7 gives us information that the moment the selecting star will appear on earth and begin to bring forth the message of restoration to the word of God that generation or his message will close the Laodicea church age the voice of the seventh angel when he shall begin to sound mystery what is the mystery Christ in gentile dispensation for we were not part of it we were not part of it he came for the Jew first because the Jews left he put them the branch and put us there so we are last minute and it is a mystery that today we have Gentile bride so the moment God selected the seventh church age messenger and he began to preach to the world the world must know that that person we are not going to find another person again until the Laodicea church age is closed when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God in Gentile bride will be finished he will close it so there is no eighth messenger there's no eighth messenger there's no leader of the bride nobody is supposed to believe that thing scripture confirms that the seventh church age is the only last church age and the voice of the messenger closes it I don't care how many dollars you have but that eighth messenger thing it falls amen it falls it contradicts scripture 
for Christ is still walking within the last golden candlesticks, Laodicea, and no other stick anymore. So right now, the only thing the born again believer who has received the word of God and returned to scripture must know is the handwriting that God is putting on the world to prepare the world to go to war. I've told you several times, the beginning of this church, uh, the beginning of this year, that God is luring the world to fight Israel so that God will kill the world, the world people, the wounded heads of many countries. So, if you have restored yourself to the true food, what you must watch around is the handwriting that God is luring the people to fight among themselves until the whole world will come against one Israel. That war, we will not see it, but the gathering around, the luring, we will see it so that we will become very, very careful. Because whether the world like it or not, God is going to slaughter the world. Amen. Joel chapter 3, verse 11. It's the process that God has taught of a long time ago. Whether you like it or not. Assemble yourself and come all ye heathen and gather yourself together round about. He's calling the world. He's using Israel as a bait. And all the world will gather together. They will hit Israel. They will say whatever it is and whatever. And then he, the Lord, will slaughter them. Cause thy mighty ones to come down. O oh Lord, whatever the situation is, the world must understand. The big men of the world, the Arab states, the nations across the world, Magog and Magog, Gog and Magog, all of them. You see how Russia is blaming America for Hamas attack. So he doesn't see nothing wrong with it for Hamas killing, killing Israel. It is America's fault. So the world, God is going to raise himself and the world is going to align around him. For God has said it already. Assemble yourselves. Come ye hidden. I'm going to kill you. We are, he's raising people to slaughter. So this, when you see this handwriting on the world, the born again believer in Laodicea who has restored himself to the word of God and living a righteous life must gather himself. Time is no more. Amen. Very soon we shall go. And now you see the whole heathen gather yourselves. God is trying to put a mechanism in place where the world will come together against Israel. We go to verse 12 and we close. For the Lord Jesus Christ is saying that verse 12 let the heathen be awakened and come unto the valley of Jehoshaphat. It is there I will sit and I will judge all the heathen. By that time the bride is gone. When that war is over, when God will just deal valiantly for Israel, the bride is gone. And verse 12 is telling us that, let the hidden come. Let them come in all their numbers in the valley of Jehoshaphat. They are going to be there. And when they fight, I, God, I will be sitting there and I will judge the world. These things, the, the signs are handwritings on the wall. What you see in the Middle East is the brewing pot of God's authority for the Gentile bride to get away. We don't have to joke. There is no more time to joke. We must be serious Christians. Amen. Putting on a white rim and covering our nakedness for all bow, all bow, all bow. One day, boom. No, it's gone. For they were looking at Messiah. Messiah, 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 Messiah. He came and the world didn't know. So also with the people not know, but the bride will know. Yes, Why? Because we are watching. For God has told us, gather the hidden together. Bring them to Jehoshaphat. And I will sit down there and judge the world. The world is going to be shocked. When the whole world Amor, is directed toward Israel and a small country, God will descend and defend them and 
at that time the world will know there is God in Israel. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anthony Blinker, the foreign secretary of America, is in Israel and he made a statement some few weeks, some few few hours ago. He is returning to Qatar to meet all the Arab leaders so that the conflict does not spread. He said, joke. Or pure, or pure, it will spread. Hmm? Hmm. Whether he likes it or not, it is spread. See, see the prophecy is not political. Though. Prophecy is scripture, it's not political. I was listening to the man, I said, man, you are, you are wasting your time. It's God who is on the scene. Right now, he's on the plane going to Qatar. Why? Going to call all the Arab leaders. Please, oh, don't let the problem come. No problem. But Iran, who is one of the most powerful people in the Arab country, yesterday, Ayatollah Khomeini said, Israel is like a cancer. It must be removed. So why are you traveling for the moment? Eh? If such a man, Ayatollah Khomeini, is sitting among the Arab countries, and say, don't, 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 don't let the, 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 the say. And then he say that Israel is a cancer they must remove. They will fight. So as they are sitting down there, and one of them who is very strong said, Israel must be removed. You, a white man sitting down there, don't go, don't go. They will believe their fellow man. You are not, I told them, Blinker, you are not a Muslim. After you have said, you have said whatever you said, and you're gone, let him go, my people. Come together, they will speak the Arab language and then they will spread. And it's not the problem there, it is God who is doing the work, Amen. not man. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are closing. We are at the door. We are at the door. When you listen, look at prophecy. When you wake up in the morning, you will shake and make sure that you are working well because I don't want to be left behind. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Shall we pray? Master Lord, we give you praise for your word, for the enlightenment of our understanding of what you have done for us in this last church age. As we sit in this church and listen to you, help our inner man. Amen. Help us to put on the white raiment so that our nakedness will not show when you come. Remember us, O oh God and hold our hands through life that all the days of our lives we shall hold on to the pure word in jesus christ's name we pray with thanksgiving amen, amen.